continuing our discussion of the bench planes. In this video, I'm going to cover the smoothing plane. Now, compared to the confusion in terminology that we've seen over the last couple videos, the smoothing plane is extremely straightforward. As its name implies, the smoothing plane is used to put the final smooth surface on the board, and all the historical sources agree on its purpose. In fact, for the most part, the historical sources describe the smoothing plane in no more than a single sentence. Peter Nicholson, in his 1845 book, says, The smoothing plane is the last plane used in giving the utmost degree of smoothness to the surface of the wood. It is chiefly used in cleaning off finished work. In my shop, I use the smoothing plane in place of sandpaper whenever possible. It is the plane in my kit that is set up to take the absolute finest cut. For this reason, the blade is honed with a camber that is basically immeasurable. The blade is also sharpened without imperfections. What I mean by this is that I won't tolerate any kind of nick or chip in the edge of the blade. If the blade from my foreplane or my triplane gets a little nick or chip in the edge, I won't immediately go to the grinder to remove it because I know that these tools aren't giving me a final surface. However, my smoothing plane is used only for the final show surface. So the blade has to be absolutely perfectly honed with no chips or nicks in the edge to give me that perfect surface. The other useful feature of a smoothing plane is it's short or relatively short sole. As you can imagine, the longer a plane gets, the flatter a surface needs to be for you to take an extremely fine cut. Not so for a smoothing plane. The short sole of a smoothing plane allows the blade to cut into minor undulations in a board surface that a long plane like a joiner plane would bridge and ride right over. So this is a good thing because when we're using a smoothing plane, we're only interested in making the surface smooth, not necessarily super flat. When it comes to smoothing planes, the most common or popular sized use is about nine inches long, like this Stanley number no. four. Stanley probably sold more number no. four hand planes than any other plane in their catalog. However, don't discount planes that are even smaller than the Stanley number no. four. Smaller planes can get into even more irregularities than a larger plane and smooth those irregularities with less work. In fact, smoothing planes from the 17th and 18th centuries were actually closer to six to seven inches long with blades that are about one and five eighths of an inch wide. This is actually closer in size to a modern block plane than it is to a modern smoothing plane. For smaller surfaces or areas of difficult grain, a block plane may actually be better as a smoothing plane than your typical Stanley number no. three or number no. four because of its smaller size. So it pays to have a small plane like this in your kit. But while these small planes can be useful, we're not really going to focus much on them for this course. As mentioned earlier, based on our historical information, we're really going to focus on three planes. The jack plane, the joiner plane, and the smoothing plane. Because with these three planes, there's almost no board you can't handle. 